everyone, it's Vivian. Welcome to another one of my finished object videos. My name is Vivian and I'm coming to you from Essex where I live with my partner Sean and our cat Bonnie. First of all, I'd like to say a big hello and welcome to all my new subscribers who have joined us recently. Thank you for coming to check us out and I hope you like what you see. I'd also, as always, like to say thank you and welcome back to my existing viewers and subscribers. Thank you for coming along again each time. So today I have four finished objects to show you. Two knitted, one crochet and one sewing. But before that, let's get to some admin out of the way. For anyone who wants to follow me on social media, I'm known as Vivette B1 and you can find me on Ravelry where I put all my projects, but mainly on Instagram and I will put links below for anyone who wants to check them out. So without further ado, let's talk about my first finished object. My first finished object is a test knit that I've done for the lovely Ellie of Craft House Magic who will be releasing her Mistletoe Kisses, Mistletoe Kisses sock on the 28th of November and these are them here. So as you can see it's a top down and you've got little balls here to signify the mistletoe, some like branches here and then further down if you can see just here there's a little kiss. So this is like I say, top down construction and you can do it as all one sock or you can do what I've done which is put an extra cuff in or you could put extra cuffs, extra toes, extra heels. So um, Ellie does have sock sets on her website that she sells and they will go very well because she sells them as a sock set with this pattern in mind. And like I say, it's all being released on the 28th of November and I will link to it in the description box below. I will also link to Ellie's latest um podcast which came out today no yesterday thursday and um she talks about it more in there so that you can see for yourself so that is the mistletoe kisses sock and as always i do have two my second finished object on the knitting side is a scrappy cow using all of my leftovers so the way that you do this and she's going to look a bit weird because i have got a, a roll neck on is it's just like that. Oh, it doesn't look too bad actually. It hides it. I made this using the magic knot ball method. So what I've done over the last couple of years is I've um, taken all of my scraps of yarn and I've rolled them into a ball using the magic knot method. So it's normally when I get to about two grams of less of yarn. I'm going to take this off. It's a bit warm. Um, so normally when I get to about two grams or less of yarn, I then put it add it to the magic knot ball. And I weighed it just before I started this project and I had about 300 grams in there. So it has been going for quite a while. And it's all different sock yarn. And it's ones that I've knitted into jumpers or sweaters or socks or shawls or some of them I've done um, where I've done mini swaps with people and I've knitted them into my Cozy Memories blanket and I've had some left over. But they're all yarns that I've knitted with over years and years and years. And the cowl itself is called the Colour Splashes. Sure, and I will actually put a link to the website to sorry, I'll put a link to the Ravelry page because it is a free pattern, so it's a really good one. It's ideal for someone who's quite a new knitter and just wants to do something a little bit different because it's all garter stitch, but you can add eyelets in, which is what I did about every two inches, and it's what they call knit on the bias. So you just literally increase one side and decrease the other side. And then you can either do it with a provisional cast on and then do a three needle bind off or a kitchener stitch to graft it together. Or if you're not used to one of those or you prefer not to, you can just cast on and then just seam it at the end. Um, it's really up to you. That's what is quite versatile in that way. Um, it's also quite good in that she gives you a recommended stitch count. But I actually did less than that because I didn't want it quite as wide. But you could do it wider or skinnier. It really depends. I mean, that's the ideal thing about it. It's more a recipe than an actual pattern. But this is it here. Like I say, I will link to the Ravelry page down below and it's a great way of working with scraps. It can also be done as a one skein shawl if you've got that perfect skein that you'd like to make a cowl with. Um, but ideal for scraps as well. So that is my finished object number two on the knitting and that's both my knitted objects, my finished objects for knitting. So my third finished object is a crochet one and it's, it, it's this here. So this is actually, I've got it folded in half at the moment. This is the hydrangea pattern by Lucy of Attic 24 and it's one of her blanket patterns now um, she does lots of beautiful blanket patterns and she does um, with Wool Warehouse in conjunction with Wool Warehouse and they come as kits 
but you can actually get the pattern itself directly from her website if you wanted to do which I've done which is use up all of my style craft special DK that I've had in stash and I had loads of colors left over where I had odd balls here and there so for this one I've actually done a 11 rows so it's these colors here so I start with the raspberry all the way down to the denim and I've just repeated them all the way down um, and I did it the width of I kind of sat in the chair and then I just crocheted a very long chain until it went past me a bit so I knew that if I folded it in half it would be nice and thick and that's all I did so I don't even know what number I did I just made sure that it it was the size that I wanted the the pattern that um, Lucy gives you is for a single bed size and she gives you the stitch the crochet stitch chain count for that but I decided just to do I just winged it basically so this is lovely it's lovely and thick lovely and warm enough I've been using it already so it's, it's great and the cat hasn't managed to nab it yet so she normally does the other thing that I'm actually going to do with this one is my my friend Carol sent me this lovely badge um, which I think sums up this year completely um, and this is where she got it from and I'm actually going to sew it to the bottom of the blanket so that in years to come when I've got it tucked around my legs I can look back and remember what I made during lockdown year as I'm going to call it so that is my crochet project so my final finished object is a sewing one and it actually relates to my cross stitch so I made myself one of these lovely pouches or vinyl wallets to put my cross stitch project in as you can see it's got my current one in it now this tutorial that I followed is actually part of the beautiful things sewing club so those of you that know me know that I work with Claire who runs beautiful things studio here in Essex um, and she has a sewing club that you can join so you join at four points throughout the year the next one being January so it's open up now if anyone wants to join for the new year and I will link to it below obviously and then throughout the year you get projects each month one project a month and they go from basic so if you're a new sewer there's the bronze club then you um, progress to silver then to gold and then to platinum and this is one of the gold projects I think um, and it's just making this so you you can use it to put cross stitching you could use you could actually use it to put sewing patterns in if you're doing you've cut some fabric and you're waiting to sew a project so and the last, last thing I like about this is you can actually see what's in there so if you've got quite a few projects on the go like I sometimes have you can think oh that's where that one is as opposed to opening them all up until you find it so yes yeah, so this is it and then on the back it just has this fabric this fabric also came from Claire because she does have a fabric shop as part of her website and a haberdashery as well um, so that was that come from that and inside if I take out the project I just have some coordinating orange fabric so I do have another one of these planned so I'm going to make another one using some fabric that I've got which is of the Nutcracker which is obviously a very um, traditional Christmas theme and I shall make that at the beginning of December and I shall pop it up later on in the month so those are all of my finished um, objects for this month but what I am going to talk about a little bit is about what I'm going to do during December so as you know most people will be doing vlogmas during December and I really admire those who manage to find enough content to do something for each day in vlogmas because I can't so what I've decided to do this year to join in is I'm actually going to do a weekly vlog so I will take f footage throughout the week of what I've been doing and then I will just put something up at the end of each week so there will be four there won't be 24 there will be four and one of the things that I am going to do is I'm going to do a couple of advent projects so last year I got the advent minis from Ellie of Craft House Magic. I treated myself to her 12 days of Christmas. And this year she's releasing an advent wrap um, on the 28th of November, the same day she releases the sock. And I'm actually going to do that to use in last year's minis and then just add any more in that I need to just to make up the correct number of yardage, etc. So I will do that and I'll do that literally a bit every day for advent. And I'm also going to do an advent cross stitch as well, which I will use to go host in my new bag that I'm going to make at the beginning of December as part of Advent. So the pattern that I'm going to do is this one here. Which one? Yes, without the light. Glare on it, that's it. As you can see, it's a Christmas tree with lots of socks hanging off it. And seeing as I am an, a prolific sock knitter, I thought that was quite apt. So again, I will do a little bit each day as part of Advent, so that's 
a bit of knitting advent each day and a bit of crochet cross stitch advent every day and we'll see how progress goes and i'll again show you progress at the end of each week um, this is a kit that I actually got off of eBay, but it's called Dream Pattern, but I can't actually see anywhere on the back here as to who it's by. But if I do find it out, I will put a link below and I will put a, a thing on the, the screen. So that is everything. Oh, I've got a cough coming on again. I've had a terrible cold. This is everything I have to talk to you about at the moment. So everybody, please take care, stay safe, and I'll catch up with you next week with the first of the December vlogs. Bye for now.